Okay, we are back. I'm gonna make like I had a problem. Well, I mean, I did have a problem, so I don't even have to make like it. But um, if I was lost in this thing, I'm gonna do a new scene. File. Do you see this alt left mouse button? New scene. No, I do not. And this will eventually come back to me. Okay, new scene again. I'm gonna go back to the primitive modeling. I am in my interface, primitive, polygon mesh. I'm gonna pick torus again. And what this gives us is it gives us the shape we picked, um, which springs into existence at zero, zero, zero. Every object in that 3D world we're creating in there comes into existence at zero, zero, zero at the, um, I wanna say it's called the abscissa basically the place where that all meets. You'll notice it's the thicker black lines there, see that? And gives us a property panel. A property panel in Softimage is the tool that gives me all the parameters that I can modify in the object, which generally is basically anything you could modify possibly. Um, these are sliders. I can physically move them and you'll see this thing changes. Uh, I also can enter a number. Um, that says 5.965 right now. I'm just going to put in a value, click on it, and put in 4. And you see my key that I change it over there. Um, you'll notice right away we get into a couple problems. I can't see my stuff anymore. Now, when you're working in 3D, uh, you will generally work differently than in other programs or other computer um, applications. One thing is that three button mouse, which I've shown to you before, I want you to have one hand on that mouse. I want you to have the other hand on the keyboard because you have to use keyboard equivalents to move fast enough. So um, I happen to know that one of the keyboard equivalents for moving around my screen is my S key. Um, I'm going to close this panel because it's taking up room. I click the X there. And I want you to look on the bottom of the soft homage screen at the very bottom row. You see how it says L, oop, L, M, R? That's left, middle, right mouse buttons. That will always tell you what your mouse buttons are doing, and any time you change something uh, setting on the keyboard, it's likely your mouse button is going to change. I need, for example, here, I need to see what I'm doing. So I need to back out, and I know if I hold down the S key, my mouse is going to change. Watch what happens. Now, you'll watch when I hold it. You see it's lit up down there. And see how my mouse pointer changed? On the bottom, it also says the left mouse button now tracks, the middle zooms, the right doesn't do anything. So let's see how that's different. Uh, my left mouse button is now moving me around, good. My middle mouse button is now backing me out, which is what I need. Now all the windows work the same. If I'm down here, I can back out. If I'm down here, I can back out. When I release the mouse button, not the mouse button, the keyboard button, S, I'm back to the other mode. Um, every button in Softimage on the keyboard has two modes. Um, one is called the sticky mode, and the other is called the toggle mode. Um, I was in the sticky mode, which is to say, if I hit S and hold it down as I am, you see it's still lit up there, this will stay in that S mode until I release it. Um, if I want to toggle it, I can just tap it once quick. And you see the tap's done, but I'm still in that mode. The other keyboard equivalent, and this is a really important one, spacebar. Spacebar generally gets you back to where you are. So now I can see more of what I'm doing, Let's say I want to get the property panel back. My property panel is picked with the enter key, like that. If I hit the enter key, I pop this back up, and now I can modify this a little more and take a look at what the different parameters are. Subdivisions increases the stuff it's made out of. This is called a wireframe view for obvious reasons. It's just the points and the edges, and they're laid out as if it's like made out of wire. Um, it can get pretty old pretty quick, so let's change that view. Under where it says wireframe, I'll go to real-time shaded OpenGL and I see that. But I want to look around here now too. Let's hold down that S key. Now notice my mouse buttons. If I'm in this window and I'm holding down S, I have left for tracking, middle for zoom, right for nothing. When I go over here, my right mouse button will now let me look around. I can zoom in and out. I can pan around. I can look all around my object. Okay, good. Now we're getting somewhere. Now let's put in another object. I'm gonna go to primitive, I'm gonna go to polygon mesh, and I will pick a cone. It puts a cone in there. 
Uh, I might want to move in to see it a little more. I'll use my S key and kind of get in like that. Okay, let's play with the property panel. Uh, that's the radius of the thing. We'll make it bigger. We'll make it taller. We'll increase some subdivisions on it just to play around with it. I want to back out in my scene. I'm going to hold down that S key. Back out, back out, back out. And right away, I'm also getting to another problem. I got to move this stuff. Let me close this property panel. Um, on the right side of my screen over here, I have the transform panel. When I transform something, I'm changing it. Um, the basic transforms I can do in an object are I can translate it, which is to move it up, down, left, right. I can rotate it, three axes again, or I can scale it, which is to stretch it. And that goes directly to these panels here, scale, rotate, and translate. Now, I can click them, but notice how I parked on that, that T and it says translate tool and next to it has a V. If I go up here, rotate tool is C and the scale tool is X, which means my, and watch, I'm gonna click them right now, my X, C, and V tools, which change the whole screen there as well, and you see me clicking them on the keyboard, they translate, well, they, they are specifically scaling, rotating, and translating. So the first thing I wanna do is translate it. I'm gonna hold down my V key in the sticky mode. I'm gonna move this thing over here out of the way of what we're doing, and I'm going to use my S key to back out and take another look around here. Like that, good. Now, let's do some other stuff to this object. Let's rotate it. When I hit the C, I get the rotation transforms. This is called the transform manipulator, this thing here. And basically, when I click on one of the axes, X, Y, or Z, red, green, or blue, with my left mouse while holding it down, I can lock it to just rotate in that axis. See that? Like that, I can move it around. I can do it in any of the windows I want. I happen to know another keyboard equivalent I'm gonna throw out to you, F. F frames my object. So I'm gonna release that, and I'm gonna hit F there, 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 and there. And that happened to very quickly set up my, where my thing is there. Uh, now let's go back here, I'm gonna hit the V. No, you know what, I'm gonna hit the X. The X scales it. We can make it taller, we can make it squatter, we can make it wider like that. Just like that. Now, let's go back to that torus. I'm using my wheel to roll in and out here. Uh, there's my torus. I'm gonna select it. The default mode you're in in self Dimage when you're not in any other mode is select mode. And this square selection tool is how you pick stuff. Notice when I selected nothing, I literally selected nothing. If I had stuff selected, and I want to unselect it, that's what I do. If I want to get just this, I get enough of it, and I have it. I'm gonna move it first. Let's hold down my V key and put it over here. Da -da -da. And I will now change the size of it a little. Let's scale it a little. Well, we'll rotate it first. And we'll now scale it. Make it thicker like that and thicker like that. Um, and let's bring back its property panel too, the enter key. We'll give it some more detail. And see what making it bigger looks like. Okay, so within just a few minutes here, we should be able to open up Softimage, get into the interface and start using a few keyboard equivalents. Uh, most notably, we should be able to use the S key to get around our scene. I'm going to hold that down and show it to you. Ah, look at that, I'm getting around all over the place. Um, we should be able to use the X, C, and V keys to translate, rotate, and scale stuff. And I'll pick this object over here, we'll do some selection. Um, we should be able to back in and out of our scene. And truthfully, that's really quite a lot. If you've gotten this far, you have the basics of primitive modeling down. Um, you might not believe it, but large parts of every 3D thing you've ever seen, movies, TV shows, especially video games, they're modeled just like this. Things like uh, rooms, um, things like um, most, most mechanically made older objects are made out of nothing but primitive shapes. Um, you know, an example I think of a lot are all the Lord of the Rings movies because they all have those castles, and there's always people going to a castle or coming from a castle, yada, yada, yada. 
What are castles? Castles are a bunch of spheres and cones and a bunch of brick-looking things. And yeah, they have to have people on them and shading and what have you. But in terms of the actual modeling of it, large parts of it are just putting stuff together like this. If you want to get good at 3D, if you want to learn how to animate in 3D, you have to know how to use primitives and you have to know how to use these keyboard equivalents to get around the screen. So you should spend some time right now and try to do exactly what I said. And if you get lost, like if I got lost right now, I would do this, new scene, no saving. There's no need to save for a while. You will get right back where you were much faster if you just open up a new scene whenever you get lost in what you're doing. Um, there's a rule in 3D, it's a horrible rule. And what it is is that it's always easier to start over than it is to fix something that's broken. So for a while here, while we're working on these, I'm going to have you just open up a new scene whenever you get lost and then try again. Um, I can go over here, primitive, polygon mesh, sphere, mess around with it a bit, it gets too big. I'm gonna use my S key, back myself out there a little. Let's go into where it says wireframe, we'll go to OpenGL, we'll give it a little more detail this way, a little more detail that way, um, and I'll move it around a little bit. I'll use this uh, V key over here to put it like that. I'll back out in this scene so I can see it down there. Um, let's scale it a little bit, we'll make it like that. We'll flatten it out a little. Okay, see, I'm, I'm modeling. I think that's plenty for right now. Um, give this a shot, see what you can do with it. Um, this video, you should be able to go back into it. You should be able to see what we're doing, how we're doing it. Um, and again, give us feedback on it. Tell us how these are doing. And if you want to see something in particular, we can show that. Uh, for a while, what we're going to be doing is going through Soft Image as we would in a 3D Animation 1 course. And that these should be able to help anyone in a course like that or anybody who wants to catch up on stuff like that. Again, I'm Francis Schmidt, and this is um, Animating in Three Dimensions.